現代を探る最新入試品質テーマによる英語長文20選 Advanced Unit 1 One often sees a notice beside the elevators in Japanese department stores, libraries and other public places. Persons in wheelchairs please use only when accompanied. But it's possible for me to steer my electric powered chair into the elevator, press the button for the floor I want, and get off there on my own. Do I? Unit 2 Landmines kill or injure large numbers of people every year. While there are believed to be about 100 million landmines lying beneath the Earth's surface, Removing them must be done by hand. Unit 3 A friend of mine worked for many years as a headhunter in Tokyo. In this work, she had to interview hundreds of potential Japanese candidates in order to determine their suitability for employment at her clients' firms. I asked if she had developed an efficient way to find out whether someone would be able to adapt easily to the environment of a foreign firm. Unit 4 Shrimp aquaculture, or farming, first became profitable about 20 years ago. Unit 5 Based on our observations of crows in cities and other places, it is clear that these birds are very intelligent. This cool intelligence is also evident in a crow's interactions with other members of its species. Unit 6 The average person has been told, or led to believe, certain facts about hunger. In reality, these so called facts are not true. They are myths. Let's look at some of the myths related to this topic. Unit 7 Each week, 25 million customers wander through the now familiar doors of Starbucks coffee stores around the world. Unit 8. In 1994, the Las Vegas police reported a disturbing series of crimes along the Vegas Strip. Unit 9. A lot of the things that we say to other people aren't true. They're fibs, fudges, fabrications, falsehoods, and barefaced lies. Robert Feldman at the University of Massachusetts. Found that 60% of the people who took part in one of his studies lied at least once during a 10 minute meeting, and that most of them told two or three lies in that time. Unit 10 It is often said nowadays that the world is getting smaller and smaller. A great world educator once said that the world is one country and mankind its citizens. Unit 11. Several years ago, a youth counselor told me about the dilemma he faced when dealing with violent young men. His direct impressions simply didn't match what he had been taught. He saw his violent clients as egotists, but his textbooks told him that these young men actually suffered from low self confidence. He and his staff decided they couldn't go against decades of research, regardless of what they had observed, and so they tried their best. To raise the young men's opinions of themselves, even though this produced no reduction in their antisocial tendencies. Unit 12. In today's information rich and prediction loving society, random selection has become so important that it is now done routinely by computers. These days, it is rare for anyone in the business of checking the effectiveness of drugs or testing public opinion. Not to be aware of the importance of using a genuinely random sample. It was not always so. In the U.S. presidential election of 1936, Republican Alf Landon was challenging the president then in power, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a Democrat. In order to try to predict the outcome, the Literary Digest magazine conducted the biggest election poll ever, sending out over 10 million question papers. When the results came in, They predicted that Landon would win by a huge majority. During the same election, a polling expert named George Gallup also conducted a poll. Unit 13 
According to the 2000 U.S. Census, the Japanese-American population of Hawaii, including part Japanese, was 296,674, including 201,764 who claimed to be full Japanese. Unlike in previous censuses, in 2000, respondents were allowed to indicate that they belonged to more than one race or ethnic group. Unit 14. Face-to-face -face communication may be classified into four styles, assertive, aggressive, passive, and passive-aggressive. Every time we communicate with another person, we can potentially choose any of these styles in which to frame our thoughts. However, we tend to stick only to one or two styles. Of the four, the assertive style is the only one that allows us to experience open and trusting communication. Unit 15. Culture and society are two closely related concepts, and anthropologists study both. Obviously, there can be no culture without a society, just as there can be no society without individuals. Conversely, there are no known human societies that do not exhibit culture. Some other species of animals, however, do lead a social existence. Ants and bees, for example, instinctively cooperate in a manner that clearly indicates a degree of social organization. Unit 16. The Mongolian warrior Genghis Khan may have done more than rule the largest empire in the world. According to a recently published genetic study, he may have helped populate it too. An international group of geneticists studying Y chromosome data has found that nearly 8% of the men living in the region of the former Mongol Empire carry Y chromosomes that are nearly identical. Unit 17. In his classic novel, The Pioneers, James Fenimore Cooper has his hero, a land developer, take his cousin on a tour of the city he is building. He describes the broad streets, rows of houses, a teeming metropolis. But his cousin looks around bewildered. All she sees is a stubby forest. Where are the beauties and improvements which you were to show me? She asks. He's astonished she can't see them. Where? Why, everywhere, he replies. For though they are not yet built on earth, he has built them in his mind, and they are as concrete to him as if they were already constructed and finished. Unit 18. If you have been moody and sad, unable to eat or sleep, chances are you suffer from clinical depression. Unless, of course, it's just a bout of the blues. If you have a nasty habit of getting into brawls, chances are you are an antisocial personality. Unless, of course, you are just a bit of a hothead. What determines whether you are sick or well? Often as not, it's whether you are male or female. Diagnosing mental disorders has always been a tricky business. With Unit 19. Weeping is a human universal. Throughout history, and in every culture, emotional tears are shed. Everyone, everywhere, cries at some time. People weep during funeral rituals in almost every culture. Around the globe, infants cry in hunger and pain, and children in frustration and disappointment. In American culture, even those rare people, usually male, who claim they never cry, can remember doing so as children. Unit 20. The modern country of Bangladesh, with its capital in Dhaka, is the eastern half of the area traditionally known as Bengal. The western half, with its capital in Calcutta, is part of India. Although the people of the two halves of Bengal speak the same language, they are divided by religion the majority of the population in the East being Muslim, and the majority in the West, Hindu. When the whole of this part of the world was part of the British Empire, Bengal was a single province. In 1947, when the British left, the British Empire in India was divided into two independent countries, India, with a largely Hindu population, and Pakistan, with a largely Muslim population. The latter consisted of West Pakistan, now Pakistan, and East Pakistan, previously the eastern half of Bengal, now Bangladesh. 
As a result of this division, known as partition, many Muslims fled from India into one of the two parts of Pakistan, and many Hindus fled from the two parts of Pakistan into India. This exchange of population was very violent. It has been estimated that about 500,000 people were killed. More than a million people moved from East Pakistan to the western half of Bengal in India. The grandmother in the passage below was one of those people. In 1971, East Pakistan gained its independence from pa Pakistan and became Bangladesh. At dinner, my father gave my grandmother her plane ticket for Dhaka. That night, my grandmother seemed really excited. I could fully understand. At 11, I had never been on a plane myself, and it seemed natural to me that the prospect of her first flight should fill her with excitement. But I couldn't help worrying about her too, for I also knew that, unlike me, she was totally ignorant about airplanes. For instance, one evening when we were sitting out in the garden, she wanted to know whether she would be able to see the border between India and East Pakistan from the plane. My father laughed. Do you really think the border is a long black line with green on one side and scarlet on the other? like in a schoolroom map? No, that wasn't what I meant, she said. Of course not. But surely there's something, a fence perhaps, or soldiers, or guns pointing at each other, or even just strips of empty land. Don't they call it no man's land? My father burst out laughing and said, No, you won't be able to see anything except clouds and perhaps some green fields. My grandmother thought this over for a while, and then she said, But if there isn't a fence or anything, how are people to know? I mean, where's the difference then? And if there's no difference, both sides will be the same. It'll be just like it used to be before, when we used to catch a train in Dhaka and get off in Calcutta the next day without anybody stopping us. What was it all for then? Partition and all the killing and everything if there isn't something in between. The border isn't on the frontier, my father said. It's right inside the airport. You'll see. You'll cross it when you have to fill in all those official forms. My grandmother shifted nervously in her chair. What forms? She said. What do they want to know about on those forms? My father scratched his forehead. Let me see, he said. They want your nationality your date of birth, place of birth, that kind of thing. My grandmother's eyes widened and she sank back in her chair. What's the matter? My father said in alarm. With an effort, she sat up straight again. Nothing, she said, shaking her head. Nothing at all. It was not till many years later that I realized it had suddenly occurred to her then that she would have to fill in Dhaka as her place of birth on that form, and that the prospect of this had worried her because she liked things to be neat and in place, and at that moment she had not been able quite to understand how her place of birth had come to fit so uncomfortably with her nationality.